Hello and welcome back to the Digital Health and Wearables series. Today another uh, episode for you, but before I go ahead, I'd like to acknowledge our global sponsor Spirit Digital and also the series sponsors ASCOM, specialists in healthcare wearables in digital monitoring. But I'm very excited uh, to have another fantastic uh, guest for you. Today we have Julien de Vlasaberry which we've been connected for quite some time and he's also the CEO of Gallen Growth. He's an investor and also an healthcare leader. Julian, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. It's an absolute pleasure. You know, it's taken a while to get uh, both ourselves organized enough to be able to uh, jump on this, but it's an absolute pleasure to join your long list of distinguished speakers. Oh, brilliant. Nice to have you. I know we've been connected for some time and know each other from the digital health space. So thank you so much for, uh, I mean, for being in here, really. No, it's a pleasure. Looking forward to answering a few questions and sharing this with uh, your audience. Oh, brilliant. So the first question, without further ado, Julian, how do you experience the digital health marketplace uh, right now? It's, uh, it's an interesting environment to be in at the moment. Um, I'm sure many of your audience are aware that it's... Uh, uh, a reported as red hot. Uh, certainly last year we saw a record breaking year for digital health funding and I'm talking about venture funding so I'm excluding any of the exits, the M&A, the SPACs, uh, but that closed at about 26 and a half billion US dollars last year, heavily driven by the US. Uh, and of course um, we saw quarter one of this year uh, rock and rolling as well with all the hallmarks of possibly being another record breaking. I think it closed at 9.5 billion just for Q1 of this year. Very much driven by uh, the, the US and, um, and we saw a good bounce back last uh, mid last year roughly from Asia Pacific. Uh, unfortunately, Europe is not seeing the same uh, pickup in relation to digital health funding, which is why I'm talking about it being a bit of a mixed affair. Um, Lots of innovation and quite clearly the pandemic has put the spotlight on digital health as being, uh, you know, a necessity uh, to uh, improving the delivery of healthcare. Uh, but the challenge is I don't think every actor in the ecosystem is currently seeing the same uh, sense of urgency. Um, I would suggest that uh, we've seen telemedicine pick up very strongly during the course of 2020 and that continues and we're starting to see an awful lot of traction and interest from various organizations in remote patient monitoring. Um, it's probably fair to say that behaviors and attitudes by healthcare professionals and by patients have changed and I don't think we should expect them to, to revert back to what they were before. Um, that said, we should be mindful of the fact that healthcare professionals tend to be fairly resistant to change, but uh, most of them saw telemedicine as an inevitable as they went forward. Um, but we're in an interesting moment, really, as vaccines get rolled out and people are starting to see a light at the end of the tunnel. I think a lot of health systems are overspent and need to find ways of being more productive going forward, and governments equally the same. And I think corporate value chains are increasingly changing and will continue to change. So, you know, from a digital health perspective, the imperative is very clear. Uh, and so we look forward to seeing even more momentum going forward. Yeah, fantastic. Well, fantastic points there. Astonishing numbers in terms of the funding and everything. Thank you so much for that, Julian. And the second Pleasure. question that I have for you is, what are the crucial aspects that successful digital health innovators display? Yeah, it's interesting because it's, it's, it's a lens that you look through from a founder perspective, but also you look through from an investor perspective. And they're not too far distant from each other in terms of, of aspects. Uh, in terms of the numbers, yeah, no, listen, this is what getting growth is uh, very good at, we track the ecosystem across the globe and therefore we track those numbers uh, very, very um, closely. Uh, and so for anyone who's interested in getting more details, they certainly should go and visit our website, particularly our research page where all those reports are complementary. Um, from a, um, a 
a founder perspective, I guess, is probably where your questions come from, an innovative perspective, really. I would suggest in the current climate, one of the one things that you should probably keep a very close eye on is careful cash flow management. Um, we are in a period of flux. Uh, it doesn't mean necessarily that funding is around the corner. Um, and a lot of investors have to date certainly decided to focus on their existing portfolio ventures. And therefore, if you're looking for new funding, be mindful it'll take longer, particularly that people cannot meet. They're very much based on Zoom to make decisions, so that can take longer. Um, but a be all and end all, and it's the same repeated message we give to all innovators in digital health and to those whom we speak to on a regular basis, is proof. Make sure that you have not only clinical, but also commercial proof, or as much as you possibly can have before you start talking to investors, simply because you have to remind yourself as an innovator that you're not the only person out there seeking money and you're not the only person out there with the best solution for digital health for healthcare uh, ever invented. And so you are competing with others. So you need to make sure you bring as much proof as possible to the table. Mm -hmm. I would suggest make sure that to achieve this, you need to build an A-team. Make sure you do have the A-team there and that you are taking your time to make sure that you have that team, but also that you are motivating that team to do their level best to take you to the next level. And then finally, of course, don't underestimate this, and I think we underestimate this a little too much in Europe, and that is the power of networking. It is immensely important to network and to publicize the things that you're doing as well as engage with various stakeholders in the ecosystem. You cannot just turn up to in front of an investor or in front of a large corporation having never spoken to them before and expect an immediate result from that conversation. You do need to invest in that relationship. Oh, fantastic. Thank you so much. Very interesting points there. Things always take longer. Well, investment in its own right always takes longer. I like what you, but the emphasis there on a proof of commercial, mm. um, yeah, pedigree, if you like. So a nice follow-up question is from a funding perspective, mm. what would be your advice for companies to be better pre prepared and therefore more investable? Yeah, that's what I was saying to you at the beginning. I think that you know, if you look at sort of the funding list or you look at sort of the founder list, it, it's uh, it's it's actually some of them are very closely knit, uh, and so uh, as an investor you will want to know that you have had the chance to build a relationship with that particular innovator and have a better understanding of their space. But essentially, you're looking for that proof. You really are looking for a clear demonstration by that venture, by its team, that they are able to achieve what they claim to be achieving, but also they're able to scale it. It's all about scale at the end of the day. Uh, a sample of a few patients is certainly a very in strong indicator but you need to be able to demonstrate that you can take it to the next scale in terms of number of patients if, of course, um, patients are key to your, to your delivery. Um, be, um, you know, from a, a, found, a funding sorry, perspective, it's an extremely competitive space. Um, and so I would certainly recommend to investors that they do invest the time to understand what is out there, how does it compare to each other, and what are the specific uh, achievements of that venture um, beyond just the uh, the financials, which are often where the focus uh, ends up being at the beginning. Uh, and what I mean by that is better understanding the clinical and regulatory achievements of a particular venture, the sort of partnerships that it's built with particular corporations that enable it to scale it as well to validate uh, what that venture's achieved. Mm, thank you, uh, Julian. Very good advice for all the innovators, scale-ups, people trying to really achieve the investment, but also uh, penetrating the market uh, place. Thank you so much for that. And the last yeah. question, lastly, um, mm. describe the role of corporations in scaling digital health. And certainly with Dallin Growth, you're doing a great, a great job there. But uh, share your uh, thoughts there, please. Yeah, well, you're right. We do spend an awful lot of time, an incredible amount of our time, working closely with both the ventures and the corporations, ensuring that um, they are talking to the right organization, but also they're able to scale what they're building. And why? Because I, I would suggest 80 to 90% of digital ventures that are being successful, that are promising, are 
a B2B2P model. In other words, the venture is really looking for and needs the large corporation to not only scale, but also validate what they're doing. And of course, achieve reach with either policyholders in the case of insurers or patients in the case, say, of a pharmaceutical company, for example. Um, so pharmacos or other corporations play an immensely important role in the uh, future of a digital health venture and therefore the innovators, the founders of that organization need to build strong relationships with, uh, with corporations. From a corporation perspective, listen, they exist along the line of what we call the innovation maturity continuum, from those that are declaring intent to do something in digital health to those that are clearly executing and building relationships with digital health ventures. And along that continuum, you've got many, many uh, corporations that are um, uh, aging further right towards execution. Um, they are generally facing three scenarios to, to achieve this. Um, the corporate venture capital arm, of course, which, uh, you know, one of the better known ones is the Merck GHI fund, which is probably the largest digital health specifically dedicated fund out there. Um, but they are mostly a financial return type uh, vehicle. And therefore, their focus is around finding the best deal that actually returns the highest amount and not necessarily totally focused on what Merck Pharmaco is needing by way of, of ventures. So it's a particular aspect of, uh, of a corporate. Incubation is the other. As we know, a lot of corporates have set, you know, set up their own incubation or acceleration programs. And those are great if you're really working with very early stage ventures. But of course, we have to remember that an early stage venture through the eyes of a corporate is something that tends to have less proof, therefore more risk, and therefore it will take longer to get um, to a return on investment. And so the more uh, favored route by, by a lot of corporations is the open innovation route, which is how do we partner with the excellent, very promising and proven digital health ventures across the market or in the ecosystems across the world to be able to develop a solution that addresses a problem statement and certainly goes some way to solve that problem statement, be it at a patient level, be it at an HCP level. And so those are tend to be the typical three mechanisms that these uh, corporations have available to them in order to really engage with the digital health ecosystem out there. There's been a lot of noise by a lot of corporations, a lot of PR, uh, sometimes called innovation theatrics. Um, and so uh, a founder of a digital health venture needs to really ascertain fairly quickly who the decision makers are in that organization they're working with or wanting to work with and how much of it is really wanting to solve a problem. In other words, what are they trying to solve and how do I play a role in solving that problem versus being yet another logo on a website? Um, COVID has triggered a number of interesting levels of acceleration with large corporates, uh, be it pharma, be it med dev, be it insurers, be it pure tech, uh, even banks, for example, are now much more interested in digital health these days, particularly along the payment side. Um, but we have to be mindful that, and I'm talking through the eyes, I guess, of another of digital health, uh, you know, innovators here. Be mindful that a lot of these corporations are entering a phase of restructuring uh, or cost cutting as they work out their exit from the COVID pandemic environment. And therefore, there will be quite a lot of indecision or slowness in decision making by corporations that are focused on digital health. Uh, so that's why I was saying careful cash flow management as a, as a founder of a digital health company is a wise strategy in the short term. Oh, fantastic. Uh, Julian, before I round up and thank you for your amazing insights, there's a lot of value for innovators and for uh, more <laughs> companies and from the other side, the investors and everything. So. I always finish my episodes. It's not really a question. I call one minute of fame. You can mention <laughs> anything whatsoever, a personal achievement, family achievement, a professional achievement. You can mention your company, you can mention a, a client, you can, you can mention a, anything whatsoever. So before I round up, Julian, over to you. Thank you very much for that one minute. Listen, it'd be very unfair to me not to mention Galen Growth largely because of the excellent work that the team are uh, delivering and and um, enabling our clients to achieve. So it really is an opportunity to say a big thank you to the entire Galen Growth team in Singapore as well as in Basel, uh, who are working uh, very hard to ensure that the innovation out there that is being built 
by all the founders uh, is finding place with patients and with healthcare professionals through relationships with the right corporations. Julian, what a way to finish. Thank you so much. I appreciate Thank you very much for the opportunity. I appreciate your time, your expertise and everything. Thank you so much. Absolute pleasure. And I hope the uh, audience uh, enjoy some of the uh, tidbits that have been included in this, uh, in this discussion. Absolutely. So to round up, uh, all the viewers, make sure you, subs if you subscribe if you're not done up till now. Uh, check up uh, Gallon Growth. I put all the details and also links to connect with Julian and Gallon Growth. Thank you. And Absolute also, pleasure. And also uh, all our global partners. We mentioned Remote Monitoring, Spirit Digital is there. Mm. And our series sponsors, ASCOM specialists in health care wearables and digital monitoring. So I'll see you all next time. Look forward to it. Thank you very much.